completely and boldly and trust God and obey Him and say what He has for you to say. Do what He has for you to do.
before time began You were on your throne And you are God alone Right now In the good times and bad You are on your throne And you are God
people, my brothers and sisters, I love you so much. Pray that you are honored by what happens in this service today. You would change our hearts, and we would listen to you, we would be obedient to you, we would walk away seeing you in a fresh way. Amen. Oh,
thank God for his goodness, for his grace, for his mercy, for this opportunity just to be here. Amen. Amen. Praise God for allowing uh, us to see Sister Stephanie. Amen. Thank you for being here. Sister Shirley, good to see you again. Amen. Good to see everybody. Amen. Amen. Praise God for just allowing us to to, to come out and, and, and just to, uh, to fellowship with each other. Amen. 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 First of all, Happy New Year. Yeah. Happy, New Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Amen. Again, this is our first uh, in-person service for uh, 2022. Um, it's hard to believe that we're, we're here, but, you know, we just thank God. And, and Happy New Year. I hope everything is going well so far. Um, amen. Let's just dive into the Word. So I, I like this time of year because there is a, it's almost like there's a built-in reset button. There's a built-in reset button. And what, what do I mean by that? So the new year gets us thinking about things we want to do differently, uh, areas in our lives that we want to be better in. Uh, this is a time of year, uh, and this is the, the month of goals, a month of planning, a month of resolutions. So this, this time of year grants us a, a, a fresh start and motivates us to, you know, to develop better habits. And, you know, I, I oftentimes uh, during this, this time of year, I spend time uh, thinking, reflecting, planning, and doing all those things that, that you normally would do when you say goodbye to one year and embrace and, and say hello to a new year. Um, and as I was doing that, this thought kind of came in my mind, and I just want to share it with you today. And it was in, it was simply, Lord, take over. Lord, take over. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I like to go into a new year and, and, and almost have like a theme that I that I focus on, and and uh, and so. Uh, this 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 is this is it for for me and, and for my family. Just just simply, Lord, take over. Uh, the Bible says in Proverbs nineteen chapter verses twenty one. It says this. It says, "You can make many plans, but the Lord's purposes will prevail." You can make many plans, but it's the Lord's pur purposes that will prevail. And so. As we progress in this year, you know, one of the things that we need to, to do constantly, daily, is just to, to allow God to take over our lives. And so today, that's what I want to talk about, what I want to focus on, just allowing the Lord to, to take over. And so uh, if you have your Bibles, let's turn to Psalms, the 25th chapter, and I'll read verses 1 through 5. And it says this, O Lord... I give my life to you. I trust in you, my God. Do not let me be disgraced or let my enemies rejoice in my defeat. Verse 3 says, no one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced. But disgrace comes to those who try to deceive others. Verse 4, show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the, the road for me to follow. Lead me by your truth. And teach me, for you are the God who saves me. All day long I put my hope in you. So let me ask you something. Who's the boss? Who's the boss of, 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 of your life? Who really is the boss of your life? Who calls the shots? Who really sits on the throne of your life? In, in, this, in this world system that we have to live in, the world teaches us that we are in control and encourages, encourages us to take control wherever you can to, to take control. So many people, uh, they, don't, they don't like it when they feel out of control. 
Because control is something that we, we've learned to embrace. But one of the things that I was thinking about is, and we've, we've talked about this and we've said this before, as a true follower of Jesus Christ, as, as his true follower, the first thing that you are required to give up is control. It's the first thing that you're required to give up. Because when you become saved, what you're doing is you're saying that you lay down the old way of life and you're picking up and embracing a new way of life that is led by and directed by the Spirit of God. Simply put, you are not your own. You're, 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 not, you're not your own. You, you, don't, you don't belong to you anymore. You don't belong to you anymore. And so notice that David in this psalm, because this was a psalm of David, he starts out by saying, O oh Lord, I give my life to you. I give everything to you. He's placing his complete trust. And we'll talk about that some more in a little bit. But he's, he's, he's placing his complete trust in God with his life. So how many of us have, 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 have said that? Have made that decision? See, David seems fine with saying, Lord, take over. When he says, I give you my life, he's simply saying, Lord, just, just, just take over. Everything, every aspect of my life, just take over. That's because he understands that there's no one better than God Almighty for him to place his life in, 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 into. To, he, there's no one better than God for him to completely surrender to, to trust in. There's no one better. Listen, have you come to that conclusion in your life, have you come to that conclusion that you are the best one to be in control? <laughs> have you come to that conclusion? See, God knows. He, he, he's a God who knows you, who loves you, who cares for you, who sees dangers that you don't see. Yes. Is able to open doors and, and shut doors that you don't need to go through. He's able to bless you beyond anything that you can imagine. But we still want to be in control. The Lord God is most qualified to take over. He's most qualified to take over in our lives. He's the same God that, that promises us, according to his word, that he, will, he causes everything to work together for the good of those who love the Lord. See, that's the God that when we say, Lord, take over, that's who we're, that's who we're putting our hands, in, our lives into. We're putting our lives into his hands. We're surrendering to him. Listen, I submit to you that he's most qualified to take over. We are. We want control. We like to have control. But I'm telling you, we're not, we're not most qualified to be in control. Listen to what Jeremiah says. The prophet says in, in chapter 10, verses 23, he says this. I know you, Lord, that our lives are not our own. We are not able to plan our own course. Listen to this verse in the NIV version. He says, Lord, I know that people's uh, lives are not their own. It is not for them to, to, to direct their, their steps. It is not for them to direct their steps. You will never... You, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not for you to direct your steps when you belong to God, when you belong to Jesus, when you say that I want to follow you. It's your, it's your uh, job to, to follow wherever he tells you to go. Listen, I understand that this goes against the grain. This goes against the world system. But, 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 but like David, Jeremiah here, he realizes that 
we aren't the best ones to plan our own course. We're just not. You're not the best one to, 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 to say what's best for you because God knows best. He knows best. He, he knows uh, exactly what you need. He knows the plans that he has for you. See, these are verses that we all know, right? He knows the plans that he has for you. Plans to, to prosper you, to give you a hope in the future. We, we, we know that. We, 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 we understand those scriptures. Then how come we still want to retain control? And we don't allow him to take over. Just something to think about. Just something to think about. Proverbs 20, verses 24 says this. A person steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand their own way? See, the, the, the truth is, if you haven't gotten it right yet, the truth is, we aren't the ones that are most capable of taking over. We aren't the ones that's most capable of taking over. The reason why that is is because Proverbs 16, verses 25 says this, There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. Listen, the best we can do, the best we can do without consulting God, without following the, the, the promptings and the leadings of the Holy Spirit, the best thing that you can do is move according to what seems right. That's the best that you can do. But see, there are other variables involved that you may not be privy to that God sees. We talk about this all the time. God sees around the corner. God saw all this was going to happen. He saw that, 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 that you know, one, one year in 2020 that there will be a pandemic and, and he, he saw all of this. Because he sees around the corner. He, he, sees the, he knows the future. He knows everything about her, us. He knows your end. He knows how it's, going to, how it's going to turn out. Ultimately, he's left in his word for us to, to, to have hope in. Ultimately, we win when we belong to Jesus. So praise God for that. But as we navigate and journey through life, there are things that we just won't see. So the best thing that you can do is do what seems right to you at the time. But too many people move, make decisions, you know, get involved in relationships without consulting God because it seems right. It feels right. But sometimes there's a way that seems right, but it may not be right. And so if we, if we develop our ear to hear in our heart the voice of the Holy Spirit, we will be able to operate and move not, not by what seems right, but what is right according to the will of God for our lives. See, we're not the best ones to, to, to take over when we follow God and allow him to take over. We can be confident that, that we are on the right path. We can be confident that we're on the right path. So, so, so Lord, Lord, take over. Take over. Giving up control is, is, is scary for, for most people. Because when we're walking and we don't have control, we're walking directly into the unknown. We're going to, to places that, that, that are unfamiliar to us. And we don't know what's going to happen. That's where, 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 where trusting God has to, to rise to the top. Go back to Psalm 25, verses 2. Listen to what David says. He says, I trust in you, my God. Do not let me be disgraced or let my enemies rejoice in my defeat. Trust in God is essential if you are going to let him take over. 
It's a, it's, it's a, it's a must. You have, to, you have to trust him. You have to, 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 to be willing to follow his lead and obey him. Trust and obey. These are basic fundamental Christian disciplines, Christian activities that we need to be engaged in. We need to trust God. We need to obey God. But I get it. It's challenging to trust God when you can't see your way. But that's when you remember uh, scriptures like, like uh, your word is a lamp uh, to guide my feet and a light to my path. It's, it's challenging to trust God when all the haters are around you are, are, are trying to, trying to uh, uh, bring you down and to tear you down and all that. But that's when you remember that the Bible says you prepare a feast in the, uh, for me in the presence of my enemies. See, it's challenging to trust uh, when, when, when you're going through the storms of life. That's when you have to remember what Jesus did to the storm. When he, sat, he, he stood up and said, peace, be still. See, it's challenging for us to, to trust God when we're facing financial difficulties. But that's when you understand that your heavenly father, according to the word of God, the Bible says that your heavenly father already knows what you have in need of. See, it's challenging when, when, when you're in a hospital uh, 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 dealing with whatever ailment you're dealing with, it may be challenging to trust God. But that's when you understand. We just had a, test, had a testimony about that. Where God is a miracle working God. And he has the final say. He knows what you need. He knows how to bring you out. So we, we, it, it's, it's challenging it's challenging to trust sometimes. But that's when we have to decide. And learn from David, David who, who, who boldly declared, I trust in you, my God. I trust in you, my God. The first part of verse 3 says this. It says, no one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced. Because I, I, I understand sometimes we're hesitant to trust God, to obey God, to give control, because we don't want to have to do something that embarrasses us. You know, sometimes we, we're, we're nervous about what, what God has put in our heart. Maybe the Lord told you to go talk to somebody, go minister to somebody. And this is somebody that you normally wouldn't talk to. And so you're, you're a little apprehensive. Maybe, maybe the Spirit of God is, is putting on your heart to, to speak up at your job and to say something that, they, you know, call something out that, that needs to be called out. And you're a little apprehensive. You're a little nervous about it. But look at what the Bible says. No one who trusts God, no one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced. You can go confidently and boldly and trust God and obey him and say what he has for you to say. Do what he has for you to do. But you have to allow him to take over and be willing and ready to, to be obedient to what he says to do. You won't be disgraced. It's going to work out for you. Listen, even if it doesn't seem like it's working out, and you find yourself in a storm. Well, then let's just go back to what we just said. Jesus, at any point, can say, peace be still. If he doesn't steal the storm, then he will carry you through it. You will never go through it alone. You'll never be by yourself. We can trust him. We can trust him to take over. We can trust him to lead us. We can trust him to hold us in the palm of his hand. We don't have to, to be worried about whether God's going to come through. Just hold in, hold on. Hang in there. He'll always come through for you. He'll always come through for you. God will ultimately get the glory out of your life when you trust him and follow wherever he leads you. So if he's leading you to speak up, speak up. 
If you made the determination to, that, that you're going to follow God, and is your, is your desire for God to take over in this year, do what he has for you to do. Say what he has for you to say. And trust that he's going to get the glory from your life. I love verses four and five because David, it, 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 in these two verses, it reads like a prayer that you and I should pray with a sincere heart every day this year. Think about this. David says, show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the, the road for me to follow. Lead me by your truth and teach me. For you are the God who saves me. All day long, I put my hope in you. Our Heavenly Father is a God who knows how to save and deliver his children. Meaning, you are in the best hands when you allow him to take over. You're in the best hands. And I'm talking about every area of your life. Allowing him to, 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 to take over, trusting him completely, wholeheartedly. So, so, so this year, let him take over. Let him drive. Let him lead. Let him guide you. Let God, let God do, do the things that he wants to do in your life. See, when we allow him to take over, you have no idea the wonderful things that God has in store for you. We don't know. We don't know what God, he can do anything. That he wants to do. He really is just looking for people who are willing to submit their will to his will. And then he can do incredible things through us. In our homes, on our jobs, in our communities, wherever we find ourselves, God, when we allow him to take over, can do incredible things for us. Right? And at the same time, we need him to take over because we have no idea what trials we're going to face. We have no idea what, what trials we're going to face, what troubles are going to come on us. Jesus said, This where you have troubles. That's going to come. But if we decide, to allow him to take over our lives today when those things come. I, 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 I promise you he'll send peace with it. He'll send comfort with it. He'll, 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 he'll provide a way of escape. He'll provide an answer for you. But see, we don't know what's around the corner. So we need him to take over. We don't know what's the, the great things that he can do in our lives when we submit to him. But we need to submit to him because we don't know what's coming. We're still in a pandemic. Everybody, I mean, that's, that's, that's not a huge news flash. We're still in a pandemic, right? So we don't know how, how this thing is going to swing. The, the information is changing daily. So we need him to take over. Decide now, decide today to trust him. To trust him. That, that, that's why it's, it's my prayer. Lord, take over. Take over. Amen. Show me your way. Show me.
me away That I may walk with you Show me your way Verses four and five. Just asking the Lord to, to show me the right path. We, we, we have so many things that we have to deal with. Uh, so many things that are that that come at us that are going on in our lives. And so we need God. We need God to, to show us the way. We need Him to show us the right path and to point us down the road that we need to follow. And so Today, we just ask the Lord to take over. We just ask Him to take over. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Heavenly Father, we just thank you again for your word, dear God. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would help us to acknowledge you. The Bible says to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts to lean out to our own understanding and in all our ways and acknowledge you and you promise to direct our path. Lord, we acknowledge you as we go through our week, dear Heavenly Father. We trust you, dear God, to show us the way that we should go. Father, we ask that you would take over in our homes, take over at our jobs, take over at, at wherever we find ourselves, dear God. Lead us by your spirit, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit operating in our lives. Now, dear God, as we leave this place with never your presence, I pray that you would go with us and that you would be with us until we have an opportunity to meet again. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.